Roostus and Annis in A Cheerless Curse, Part 9. Uh, there you go. It was a dark night, and Roostus, Annis, and Feasty were camping. They were on their way back from Mount Poyo, and all three of them were awake, even though it was late at night. Annis was awake, thinking about how she was a chumming bird, and she could turn into a squirrel, and she could slow down and stop time. <clears throat> Feasty was awake, thinking about how she was a chicky pine, and that she could fly like an eagle, <clears throat> and her feathers could shoot out like arrows, some that would pierce through thick metal, <clears throat> and others that would carry healing juices. And Roostus was awake because he was frustrated. <clears throat> he was frustrated, meaning he was sad and a little bit angry. And the reason why he was sad and a little bit angry is because he felt left out. His two best friends <clears throat> had just discovered that they were magical creatures and that they had special powers and that they were very special. And Roostus was sad because <clears throat> he didn't have special powers. He didn't have any magic abilities. He was just a regular old buffalo. How old buffalo? No, he wasn't old. A regular old is a saying sometimes that just means a normal, common buffalo. <clears throat> and that made him sad that he wasn't special like his friends. And that's what he thought. And as he was lying there in bed, he suddenly heard next to him, and he looked over, and there was a rattlesnake right next to his head. Oh, wait a minute, he said. We are near Rattlesnake Gully. This rattlesnake must be from there. That all ran through his head, and the next thing he thought was, Oh no, the snake is going to bite me, and I'm going to die. <laughs> With the sound of a rattlesnake's rattle. If you've never seen a rattlesnake, it looks like a regular snake, but on its tail, it has a rattle. And it sticks its tail up in the air and shakes it really fast to make a rattling sound. Oh no, said Roostus, the rattlesnake is going to bite me. And all of a sudden, the snake got up and it leaned back and then went, whoop. it struck. When we say a snake strikes, that means it moves really quickly to try and bite something. And it struck at Roostus. But luckily, Annis was there. Annis heard Roostus call out. She heard the rattlesnake, and she saw it get ready to strike. And so she quickly used her magical powers to freeze and stop time. And she discovered that not only could she stop time for everyone else, but she could also choose people to be with her in the different time in the time that wasn't stopped or slowed and so she chose she made it so that Roostus and Feasty as well as herself were not stopped and so Roostus said, thought oh no as he saw the rattlesnake strike but the rattlesnake froze in midair just a couple of inches away from his face and it didn't move and it stopped rattling he realized he didn't hear the crickets or the breeze anymore. And he realized that time had stopped. And he looked over at Annis, who was now up in the air, flittering above him. And he said, thank you, Annis. You just saved my life. And Annis said, you're welcome. You're my best friend, Roostus. And so Roostus quickly rolled over away from the snake. And the three friends moved away from that place. And they went to the to cross Rattlesnake Gully with the backwards river down at the bottom. 
But the problem was, the breakable bridge was gone. And so they had no way of crossing. Well, Feastie did, and so did Annis. But Roostus didn't have a way of crossing. It was too far for him to jump. But he thought... Well, he could just go oh, oh, by it. Well, he has to get across it to get back to the Crayon Caves in Yellow Forest. Oh. So he thought, I... Maybe I have magical powers too, and maybe I can fly. So he took... He walked back, and he ran up to the edge of the gully, and he jumped. And he thought for a second that he was flying... And then he was, not really flying, but he jumped just a little bit further than a normal buffalo should have been able to, and he landed on the other side. Wow, said Annis. Wow, said Feasty. That was amazing, Roostus. That was very special. Oh, well, thank you, he said. I guess that was. And so they kept walking until they got to the cave of the Gollywomp Sneeple. And that's the end of our story for today.